So the next stage in our processes of financial management is monitoring and controlling. And that is all about monitoring in particular your financial statements. And we're going to look at three key financial statements in the business. But this video is going to be focusing on the cash flow statement. And where you'll find this in the syllabus, under the processes of financial management, we're looking at monitoring and controlling, and this specific video focuses on that. So what exactly is monitoring and controlling? And if you remember from a previous video in planning and implementing, it is one of the phases in implementing uh, your different financial management processes. So it's very important for a business to make sure that they're constantly reviewing and checking and balancing all their different finances. And the reason why it's important is that a business is constantly influenced by internal and external factors. So by having consistent and accurate financial records, it can help them to deal with any sort of problems that occur as a result of these. And the financial controls that we use in monitoring are our cash flow statement, income, and our balance sheet. And we're going to start looking now at the cash flow statement. So a couple of years ago, you would have seen in the news all about Dick Smith. Now, Dick Smith was a company that went uh, insolvent and went into receivership, which essentially means that they closed down the business, they sold off everything in order to repay back their debts. And that was the end of the business as they knew it, unless someone ended up buying the company off them up and all the debts were repaid. So in this case for Dick Smith, uh, another company did buy them and now they're an online store. But at the time when they were going into receivership um, and they had to sell everything because they had $400 million worth of debts, they ended up selling all their products, but even the furniture and the fittings and the fixtures in the uh, in the actual store. So that included where products would hang off as well. So that's why it's really important to monitor and control what's going on in your business financially so you don't end up like this guy over here. So when we're looking at a cash flow, it's a problem. Cash flow is a big business problem because if you don't control it, you can have two kinds of problems. Firstly, you can have liquidity problems and that's your short term ability to pay off your debts. And you can also end up in insolvency, which is your long-term ability to pay back your debts. And that is what essentially leads to the closure of business. While profit is really important for a business, cash flow is probably even more important to a business because without having constant cash flow, you won't be able to pay off your expenses and your liabilities in order to actually operate. And in this case, Dick Smith became insolvent because they weren't monitoring their cash flow. So by looking at the cash flow statement, what it does is it summarizes your cash transactions. So that's cash flowing in and out of the business over a period of time. And you'll see some different kind of looking cash flow statements. You might see some that is cash flow statement for the year, but you'll also see cash flow statements that are month to month. Now, a business will have both of them. The yearly cash flow statement will be done at the end of the financial year, but they will also have month to month cash flow statements. And the reason why it's important is because it gives creditors information about their ability to pay their accounts back and the degree of risk associated with letting them borrow money for you. So if you can show your cash flow statement to someone who's going to lend you money, they can see, yep, they have a regular cash flow coming in and they don't have too many expenses. So we see them as less of a risk if we're going to send, give them some sort of money. So some key terminology that you need to know is we use the term cash inflows and that is your money coming in and we also use your cash outflows which is money coming out. So anything that results in money coming in not only includes your sales, that's the most common type of money coming in, but also if you decide to get a loan or if you decide to sell some shares, that initial transfer of money into your business is a cash inflow. Also, if you sell a property or some sort of equipment, that also represents a cash inflow. Um, just a note here on cash inflow and the use of the word cash. That obviously means actual currency, physical money, but more and more that also means uh, electronic transfer of funds. So if you're using a debit card or if you're using um, BPay, that still counts as cash, even though there's no physical exchange. 
it still counts. The only time that it doesn't count as cash is um, when you have a check coming in or accounts receivable. That's not actual money coming in. So our cash outflows is where we have to send money out of the business. That can happen when you pay back your bills, when you make loan repayments, when you're issuing dividends back to your shareholders, a whole range of things. So there are three ways that we can categorize inflows and outflows. Inflows come into the, into the company through three sources. We have one operating inflows, two investing inflows, and three financing inflows. So these are all inflows coming in from different purposes. So we're further categorizing the cash inflows. And similarly, cash outflows can also be categorized in the same way. So when we're looking at operating activities, this is any sort of cash flow that's related to the provision of goods or services. So anything like income from selling your actual good or service. If you have to pay your suppliers for your stock, you need that stock in order to provide your good and service. So that's part of an operating activity and the same for your employees. So that would be things like your wages. Without your employees, you wouldn't be able to operate on a daily basis. So cash flows relating to investing activities, anything that's all about selling your non-current assets, so your long-term assets and just general investments that will help to generate income for the business in the future. And that can include things like selling your vehicles. It can include things like buying a new property, maybe purchasing a new plant or some new machinery that will really help your business to grow in the future. In terms of financing activities, cash flows in terms of money coming in from raising finance or borrowing money, that is where we look at financing activities. So when you issue some sort of shares, when you take out a loan, when you're making loan repayments, these can all be categorized under financing activities. So this is what a year on year cash flow statement will look like. So this is for one year in 2011. And the key things that you will note in this cash flow statement is that it always has a title and a date. You'll have all your different categories. So you'll see the operating, investing and finance activities. You'll have your dollar sign with your cash inflows and outflows. But what will happen is your outflows will always be in brackets. And you'll have a cash balance at the end of the year. So that cash balance will be all your inflows minus all of your outflows. And so that cash balance is what we actually call net cash flows. So net means by the end of it. Once everything has been finalized, your net is what the business actually sees at the end of it. So that is your cash inflows minus your cash outflows. When you're looking at the closing balance of your cash at the end of a period, so where your cash is at the end of that particular period, you start off with what you, the cash that you started off with in the beginning, you add any new cash inflows and you take away any cash outflows. And that's how you end up with your closing balance. So your net cash flows is all about just for one single period. And your closing balance is taking the information from the previous period and applying it to the new one. And your closing balance, you'll find, will also end up equaling your opening balance for the next period whenever that may be, the next month or whenever it may be. So when we looked at, say we are calculating here the closing balance for June, then the opening balance that you get here is actually the closing balance for May in the previous month. So this is what the actual cash flow statement for Coca-Cola looks like. And this has been taken from their financial report and there's some key things that we're going to look at in your exams you will not get something this difficult but real life cash flows cash flow statements obviously still follow along the same trends of the simplified ones that we are looking at in business studies and you can include this in your case study section so when it actually comes to the coca-cola looking at it in depth the cash flow statement some important things for you to look at are and i'll just highlight them here and those are the fact that firstly the money talks about in millions of dollars and you have to be careful that you look at the right thing there because 
when you are looking at it, when you make some sort of calculations, for example, if you interpret this as $6,920, if you put that into a ratio or a formula later on, which you will have to do, then you could actually end up getting the question wrong. So just be mindful that that is the case. Um, also, there are lots of different terms that can be used in financial statements, and we can't possibly categorize them all. We do know the ones that are most common and the ones that are especially seen in HSC style questions. But just some other ones that you might want to know are depreciation and amortization. So when you're talking about depreciation, that involves assets declining in value over time. So that's very, very common for things like vehicles and also in terms of things like technology. And that's most common there. And amortization is also the cost of your assets being spread out over time. So instead of buying something in one hit and it's a bulk cash payment, uh, you could be making smaller repayments over time. And so amortization is the word that we look at there. So in here, what they do is they take all their operating activities, they list them all here, they add up all the values, subtract anything that's in brackets because that's a cash outflow. And then they end up with your net cash provided by operating activities, which is there. Then you'll see the same happening in terms of investing activities. Just some terms that you should know are proceeds means money coming in, money that you've earned. Disposal means to get rid of something, so you're selling it. And acquisition is all about buying, to actually acquire and get something. Once again, they've got the net cash um, as a result of investing activities on the bottom. And the same thing happens in terms of your financing activities. You'll get your final balance, you take away all your money, and you get your cash outflows at the end of it. And then lastly, we have a very complicated end to the cash flow statement with some other words that you should know, such as restricted cash. So that's money that you have, but it's not available to use immediately. It's being held for a specific purpose. You could say that that is very similar to retained profits, but it's in terms of cash. And then also uh, cash equivalents. Uh, is another word used for short-term investment, such as government bonds. So that's your cash is held there, but it's in a bond and you'll be getting the cash at a later date. And then you can see throughout this whole cash flow statement, they've been comparing from one period to the next. And we can see that in the previous period, it was $9,221 million. And in this period, it's actually decreased. So you've had more cash outflows than inflows in this current year. And so then the business can actually take that and say, well, what's been going wrong? How can we improve this?